Hi friends, I'm Jen. Welcome to Be Set Free. So we are on our final day seven of the Bible plan, winning the war in your mind. I always want to say winning the war in your thoughts because it's, it's the same thing. And we're on day seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to go ahead and start reading it. And this is a great day because it wraps up everything that we just learned and um, talks about the four specific steps we learned um, of how to implement winning the war in our minds. Because like you, every day, I feel like I have more than I can handle. I rely on God to renew my mind. His truth is my battle plan. I continue to create new trenches of truth to replace my old ruts so they will give me thought pathways leading to life and peace. Where do you need Jesus today, right now? Where are your thoughts falling short of his life-giving truth? Are you stuck in a negative, hurtful, and poisonous rut? What will you do? You will use the four tools God has given us to fix our thoughts and win the war in our minds. Number one, the replacement principle. Number two, the rewire principle. Number three, the reframe principle. And number four, the rejoice principle. Number one, you will remove the lie and replace it with the truth. We know we have an enemy who is seeking to destroy us. His weapon is the lie. Our weakness is believing lies. And if we believe a lie, it will affect our lives as if it were true. The problem is that we don't realize that the lies we believe are lies. Hopefully, the lies you need to defeat are now clear to you. Number two, you will create new trenches of truth. Our brains have neural pathways, mental ruts we created through repeatedly thinking the same thoughts, which trigger our autonomic response. Sorry, which trigger our automatic response to external stimuli. To stop a behavior, we need to remove the lie behind it and replace the neural pathway. We dig truth trenches. How? You renew your mind with God's truth. Number three, you will reframe. We cannot control what happens to us, but we can control how we perceive it. We all have cognitive biases that cause us to see things in ways that we do not reflect reality. That do not reflect reality. But we have the power to do cognitive reframing, changing how we view the past and the future. Number four, you will change your perspective through prayer and praise. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by everything that is happening, but when we've had enough, God is enough. Not only is God enough, God is near. We stay mindful of his presence. When we do, it leads us to pray. Praying changes our brain as does praising God. We praise him for who he is, even if the what is not what we want. As we praise God, he shows up and gives us peace of mind. Decide today that you will not think like the rest of the world. You will let God renew your mind. Instead of becoming fixated on what you see, fix your thoughts on Jesus. He made you. He will sustain you. He can carry you, strengthen you, and empower you to do what he's called you to do. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. God is more than enough, and nothing can separate you from God's love. Let God change your thinking. He will change your life. Do not be conformed to, oh sorry, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is, that is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking to jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of god 
I love there where it says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? Wow. Despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That is amazing. Hebrews 13, 5 uh, through 6. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Ephesians 2, 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Romans 8, 31 through... 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angel, angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow, guys, God is so amazing and you know, he loves us so much and there's nothing that we've been through or nothing that we've done that can keep us separate from the Lord, you know, and if you feel separated from the Lord, um, just start like this study says, reframe your thoughts, choose to believe what the Bible says that God promises never to leave you or forsake you, you know, there were lots of verses given in this Bible study that are God's promises and his truth that we can memorize, that we can make a list of, keep a little list. I made a list and I keep it in my phone under God's promises and I just add to it. I add to it frequently and the list is getting really long. It's basically almost like rewriting a good portion of the Bible because God gives us so many promises and you know, man is a liar, but God's not. And they, there can be times in our life where we feel separated from God. You know, when we feel those ways, we need to examine what's happening in our life. We need to examine if there's something we need to repent from ourselves. We can always find something to repent from, which is to admit the sin to the Lord, to tell him whatever it is. And to say, repenting is turning away, you know, saying, please forgive me for, and you fill in the blank, and then say, I, you know, I, I repent of that. I turn away from that, Lord, and I turn toward you. Please fill me today. And I choose to believe your promises are true, that you have now forgiven me as I have asked for your forgiveness. And I will choose to believe that you are here with me and that I am forgiven. And then the next step is like this Bible study said, let's start reframing our thoughts. Let's make new neural pathways. Let's dig our thoughts out of the trenches in our brain that they've created and let's start making new trenches. Yes, it takes some work. Yes, you're worth it. And yes, you can do it. And it just takes a bit of work at first. And then you do this every day with whatever negative thoughts you're having. Replace it with um, God's promise. Replace it with 
um, God's truth, Repl replace it with a positive thought, ideally from the word. And um, you, it will, it will be work for the first few days. It'll be work maybe for the first week or two. And then suddenly you're going to see your mind is going to start to change. And, and you won't be like waking up one day and go, oh my gosh, my mind is different. You will start waking up each day and going through your day and things won't be so heavy. They won't be so stressful because you will have been changing your thoughts. Your mind will start thinking on other things even. And I remember waking up one day and just being like, oh my gosh, I'm... I haven't been thinking about those thoughts I used to think when I first woke up. I'm not seeing those pictures in my mind that upon waking up, I would just see those pictures in my mind of those people or those things that happened. Suddenly, they were gone. And you know, as I'm realizing those thoughts are gone, my mind wants to jump back in that trench and I say, nope, and I get up and I take my supplements and I go make some coffee and I'm on with my day, right? Right? And that's a positive way. Sometimes we can distract ourselves with negative things, um, but this is the opposite of that. We are distracting ourselves with truth and goodness, and we are making a new path. And it's okay to distract your negative thoughts. It's a must. It's a must. And, you know, friends, I am here to help you with that if you're having a negative thought or negative pictures in your mind and you need help, you, maybe you need some scripture um, that might help you um, to think on that scripture instead of those thoughts and you're just, you're really struggling to even find that for yourself, I'm happy to help you. I've needed people to help me too. And that's why God makes a whole body of people, right? Because um, not only sometimes are we weak and we need help of our brothers and sisters, but also God gifts, gifts us with different gifts. And so where I don't have a gift, somebody else does have a gift, right? And um, so never hesitate to reach out for help. If you're around people who would judge you and say that you're not Christian enough because you're reaching out for help, that God should be enough and you just need to pray, those aren't the people that understand. Um, those are pretty, um, I don't know, those aren't safe people to be reaching out to, okay? Because that's just not the truth. God calls us to reach out to our brothers and sisters in Christ for help. And I would just say in this day and age that if you're a single woman like myself right now as I'm making this movie, this YouTube video, if you're a single woman, try to reach out to, to other women, okay? It doesn't matter if they're single or married. Um, it does depending on the, the problem or the issue you need help with, but use discernment. You know, reach out to a Christian sister, okay? Not a, not a man. We need, the sisters need to stay together and we know each other. Um, there's no sexual tension there because we not, we're not the opposite sex. Um, in, in real good doctrine, Bible, <laughs> um, we want to we want to stick with women stick with women the men stick with the men the women mentor the women the men mentor the men the men and that's how it should be and there's there's many different reasons for that and that's a good it's a good way and as a woman i wouldn't feel right mentoring a man not even you know that's just not the way it's supposed to be and as a man if a, if there was a man he should feel a bit uncomfortable mentoring a woman it, I truly believe to get the biggest growth and the most connection with the Lord and with our friends is to build strong relationships with like-minded people of the same sex. That goes for men and that goes for women. It's super important. So I just want to lead you in that way to keep it super clean. You know, some of us have issues of, um, maybe you have issues of an abusive father uh, sorry, maybe you have issues of abusive mother. 
and you're a woman and so you have a tendency to reach out to men well god wants to heal that in you and i can say that because i've come from that i had an abusive mother and i've always gravitated toward men because my father was my safe my safer place right and you know god's been doing a lot of healing in me a lot and i've almost made a 180 um, in my heart, I definitely have in my actions where um, instead of reaching out for men because they just intuitive felt le they intuitively felt safer to me, I now am building relationships with sisters in the Lord. And um, it's really cool because the, the church supports that, you know. And so it's, it's like in a way, in a healthy way has forced me to deal with my mommy issues, right? And it's so funny because although although um, I had an abusive mother, so I would turn toward men, I would find men who were, who would abuse me. <laughs> you know, because our, our core issues that happen at birth really do a number there, you know? So it's super important that we do things God's way. And sometimes we don't understand um, why we're doing things, why God wants us to do something his way until we do it. And then we can look back after doing things his way and say, wow, God, you were right. <laughs> and that builds our faith up even more, right? So anyways, thank you for joining me for this Bible study. Um, I really hope that it blessed you if you need to I mean I'm I love this Bible study I'm going to read it over and over um just just to remember you know because I want to train my mind and keep it tip top and keep it focused in this good direction of reframing and and um noticing my thoughts and what am I thinking when I'm in a funk okay let's take that thought let's hold it captive let's um let's tell our let's i'm going to tell myself the truth instead of the lie of my thought my negative thought i'm going to find a scripture that um that is the truth to repeat to myself instead of the negative um destructive thought and then i'm gonna count it all joy that was the last thing is counting it all joy because God promises to never leave us or forsake us. He promises that everything works out for good to those who are walking according to him, his ways. And everything we can count as joy. Um, we don't need to get wrapped up in the negativity. We just don't. We can choose to have a whole different perspective. And, you know, isn't that the Christian life? Isn't that? You know, isn't that the joy unspeakable? It is. So anyways, God bless you, brothers and sisters. And as always, feel free to reach out to me. Be set free from abuse at gmail.com. I'm having such a nice time getting to know you guys and talking to you in the email. And always, always um, leave a comment. I love to hear from you. And I love it when you guys are hearing from each other. All right, I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.